Hey everyone, let's make an assembly in Alibre that has an exploded view with linked bubbles to a bill of materials. And this is super easy in Alibre. I think it's because it's uh, so well developed, honestly. So let's jump in here and take a look at this 3D model. So here's our sheet metal jack that uh, we'll be working with. And the cool thing about Alibre is all of these individual components uh, are able to collapse down into sheet metal flats or blanks and so you can compensate for k-factor and do other things and so this has been a really cool exercise in being able to make a sheet model or a sheet metal assembly uh, we have mates that allow us to spin the screw and raise and lower the jack just like you would in real life we even have a gear mate so that we can uh, control these arms properly did you know that the scissor lifts used gears between the arms i thought that that was pretty cool so what's cool about a libre assemblies are you uh, have a place for everything. And speaking of everything having a place, there is something for everyone also at Brilliant.org. If you have hours or minutes, even small efforts add up on Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a great place for people in technical careers who want to sharpen their skills, those in school who want to supplement their learning, or anyone who wants to know more about the world around them. I have been enjoying the astronomy class, and I've even made a few spreadsheets to do the math presented in the course. But what I appreciate most about Brilliant is the interactive and visual approach to an education. If you're like me and enjoy the special aspects of CAD, I think you too will love the interactive and visual approach to otherwise quite complex concepts. You know, both FreeCAD and Alibre use Python scripting. And the Brilliant.org Python course can grow your skills in using both. For all kinds of STEM topics, Brilliant.org has your back. From neural networks to algebra, you have everything to meet your educational goals on Brilliant.org. Please go to Brilliant.org slash Joko Engineering Help to try a premium subscription free for 30 days. And the first 200 of you will receive 20% off an annual premium subscription. Well, that placement sure was brilliant, but now let's get started in making an exploded view of the jack. Uh, so first, I click on Exploded View, and I can click on Auto Explode, and Alibre does the exploding for me. And for not knowing what is being made, I think Alibre does a really good job at uh, figuring out how to explode these parts. But... I think I'll exit my exploded view and I can delete my previous exploded views that I've made as I do prefer to use a manual explode. So I click on manual explode. I can hold shift on my keyboard, but first I'll, I'll select a component and then I'll hold shift to select subsequent parts. And I select the parts that I would undo when I'm, say, in my garage trying to take this apart in real life, right? I think a good way to explode is to do as though you're going to take it apart in real life. I can select these nuts and explode them out a little bit further. Notice I'm not holding shift when I select my first part. I only hold shift when I select my subsequent parts. I've got my long shoulder bolts here, so I'll do a little explode step for them. That's pretty good. And then I have these shorter shoulder bolts. And so this jack isn't 100% realistic, but it is close enough for the purposes of our video. So we've got our bolts taken out. Perhaps I can select these components. And I've got a little E-clip in there I'll select as well. And I'll move this whole thing upwards just enough. And maybe I'll belatedly move this component out just enough to be able to distinguish Yeah, that, that component goes right there. I'll move these components out just enough. Move my E-clip up. And I'll move this out just a bit further so that we can sort of distinguish how these things go together. Move this up as well. 
And maybe I'll move my base downward just a little bit. All right, I think that's going to be a uh, pretty good exploded view for our assembly if we're trying to call out individual components. So we're looking good there. That's how we do an exploded view. Now how do we send this to a drawing? Well, the first thing is we want to make sure that our updates are captured. So I'll exit my exploded view and save. Save my jack assembly. Next, we'll go to send to and make a drawing of this design. So it asks us for our template. This template's as good as any. Uh, we can fill in information for our drawing date, our drawing number, who drew it, and then our sheet number and scale are going to be uh, both active. And then we're asked, what view do we want? So I'm going to undo my top, front, and right view and simply do my top uh, isometric view up here. And I'm going to make sure that that is set to my exploded view or exploded view 1. And uh, we'll say OK as we can adjust the other aspects of our scale later on. So I go to my sheet, right? I can drop my view right here. And then it will load our view. One important thing to note, I modeled threads on all of the components for this. Modeled threads are not really that advisable for performance on any platform that we're talking about. FreeCAD, SolidWorks, um, Onshape, I mean all of these things. Threads take a lot of resources, and I have a very large thread in this, so don't judge the fact that this is taking a while to load the view by the idea that, uh, you know, this is a slow software or something. This is quite a fast software, but I made it slow by modeling the threads, and it would be slow in probably just about any uh, program with the amount of thread modeling that I did. So important to note, as a side note, when you have assemblies, if you model threads, expect slow times, and that's going to be true uh, on any platform. You know, I've gone to a lot of SolidWorks conferences, and all of them have said avoid actually modeling threads. So I broke a rule on this, not anyone else. That's why this is taking a while. Excellent. So we've got our view imported. Why don't I... Um, Click on this. Maybe I can reposition it. So I can click on here and say change scale. Uh, maybe I'll try 1 to 5. That puts us at a pretty reasonable size. I'll try to sneak up on it, right? 1 to 4, I think, is probably what I want to go with. So I'll reposition this. All right, so we have our drawing view. Let's go to view display. I want to go with shaded. I think that makes for a pretty cool uh, view of the drawing. So there we are, shaded. And then let's uh, insert a bill of materials. We'll go to Sheets and Views, Bill of Materials, and a separate window will come up, but we'll use a standard template. So we place our bill of materials, double-click here. We'll edit the bill of materials, and that's where our second window comes up. And I want to get rid of a few of these things, right? Um, I can shrink my item number. I can shrink my quantity. Uh, I don't need part numbers for what I'm doing. So just go to column, delete. Part name is fine. Uh, I won't have revision on my table. So say column, delete, column, delete. I can shrink that down a bit more. And then we'll just close the view, right? So that'd be my bill of materials. We can place it wherever. And then we want to bubble. And bubbling is even easier. So we'll go to drawing management, call out, and then I can start selecting items and bubbling them. I'll hit the enter key to move on to my next bubble, right? Enter, enter, and I can bubble as much as I'd like. So I'll go ahead and do every component. Maybe I'll fast forward so you don't have to sit through me just clicking on things. So that should be everything in this assembly that we've been able to bubble. So we can close that. And we talk about a little bit of bomb management, right? What if I wanted my base, 
which is number 15, to actually be item number 1 and change my item numbers. Well, I can do that by double-clicking on my uh, build materials. That brings up my window to be able to edit. And I can simply drag my base up to position 1, and then that goes to position 15, and so on and so forth. Uh, if I get into a position where maybe things are out of sequence, uh, maybe I change my components and this starts at, you know, three, four, five, six, and I don't have a position number one, I can simply hit this resequence number and it renumbers any uh, unnecessary gaps in the bill of materials. Very handy. So I think the rest of these controls are pretty self explanatory, and uh, that's how I can resequence my bill of materials and change my item numbers if needed. And you'll notice now my base is connected to bubble number one, so that has updated automatically, uh, which is a great feature that your bubbles are linked to your bill of materials. You don't have to worry about the value inside of them. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.